no spare. No, but it looks like there's a hole for a spare. All you get is this. What do you get? <laughs> is that from Ferrari? Yeah. See, it's got that 40 on it. <laughs> That's the craziest thing I've ever Listen, seen. Listen, don't ever lose this. It's like three grand on eBay. <laughs> the most expensive. Yeah, fix a flat. Fix a yeah. flat kit in the world. Yep. In the heat. Yeah. These two are the outside air that come through those two vents right there. That's it. That's all you got. And you got uh, fuel gauge, a boost gauge. No, that's a the boost oil gauge pressure. over here. Yeah. So you got fuel. Yeah. Oil pressure, oil temp, boost, tack, speed, water temp. Oh, that's, that's all you need. How high does the speedometer go? Um, 220. 220, and it'll do what? 201, you think? I think it might go a little more than that. Um, but uh, based on based on the gearing. Uh, and, and where the RPMs were when I've had it at very high speeds. Which, on the track, of course. Of course. How fast have you had it on the track, quote unquote? Um, I've had it up to 190. <laughs> Is it pretty stable? Extraordinarily stable. As it gets, as it goes faster and faster, it just seems to hug the road better and better. Now you were telling me this has 17-inch uh, wheels, but you put, you've got 18s on it right now. Yeah, in the because, front. because I put on the LM brakes, um, which are very large Brembo's, and consequently, to make that work, you need to have wheels that cover them properly. And there were originally 17s that did that, but with modern tire technology and the sizes available now, it's much better to have uh, the 18s, and they fit great. They fit Turbos. And how's that? Uh, how's the five-speed? Is it pretty? Uh, it's fantastic. Yeah, that it, notch is pretty good. No, it's, it's very direct, very good. You know, I wouldn't call it easy like a like a Japanese car might be, but it, but it's very suited to the car. Very fitting, very good, very awesome. Ferrari 1984 made something called a 288 GTO, which was, in theory, their first limited edition supercar, which was done for Group B racing, which never happened. Well, for their 40th anniversary, they basically took that car and they extended the development of it and just said, what's the most that we can do to make a great car? And this car could have only been made kind of one time in history where they had enough technology to put the power and the speed and the aero and all that, that stuff but yet, before they did the traction control, the ABS, the power steering, this thing has nothing. It doesn't have power steering, it doesn't even have boosted brakes. You gotta stand on the brakes to stop. And everybody says, oh, the brakes are terrible. The brakes are amazing. You just have to use your legs. It's gotta be one of the best sounds in automotive history. It's really, a, it's a, well, it's a great car. It sounds really <laughs> awesome with this exhaust too. It's a yeah. wide open LM exhaust. And yeah, it's just fabulous. Under load and full throttle, when it's warmed up, it really. It sounds like probably like a race car, right? It's probably screaming. Yeah, a lot, yeah. a lot like it. But the turbos keep it fairly quiet, right. yeah. relatively speaking. So you can go with a much more open exhaust otherwise. for 850 that are not as good as this one so you know that's a lot of money there's a lot of really cool cars that are here at cars and uh, coffee that you can buy why this one the f40 to me was the epitome, the epitome of of cars and there's no not only is there no better car in the world than an f40 but there's no better anything you know if, if you know if someone said you know you have all the money in the world what, what would you buy it would be an f40 you know and that's that's kind of it for me there's nothing else that really holds a lot of pull with me for something that just i'm so emotionally attached to uh, and enjoy and get and get the pleasure from and yeah it's a lot of money for a car and 
some of it's out of my control as to you know what the value climbs to. But when I get in this thing and I turn the key and I drive and I hear it and I feel it, there's just nothing that can that can beat that. Uh, it's not a trailer queen. I probably drive it two or three days a week, um, and uh, sometimes it's just for pleasure. Every now and then, if I have an errand that's that's kind of far away, I hop in this and I and I do it. And uh, you know, most people don't know I have this, and so I, I, I try and stay a little under the radar. Except my neighbors all know because their house shakes <laughs> when I up. when it when it idles in the garage. <laughs> and uh, you know, my neighbors just think of me as like the, the crazy car guy. I like the fact that there's locks actually right there on the. Yeah, I can lock it. The you can lock too. it. Yeah. Yeah. No, nobody steals your. Uh, My engine. Twin no. turbo. Here's the key for that. <laughs> and how much horsepower? What, what, what is this thing putting It's out? about you know stock. It's it's right around 500 for a U.S. car. Okay. Um, this is a little bit more. Um, I have a lot of LM upgrades on it. These guys, the intercoolers. These two things are the turbos. Yeah. How about the radiators? Where are those? Up In front? front? Yeah. So does the car get hot? I mean, I know no, it runs extraordinarily cool, cool even yeah. on the hottest days, which is hard on a day like today to get enough temperature in there. They stopped making this car in 1992, but they continued to develop it until 97 uh, for racing. And consequently, there's a lot of parts that are available through Michelotto in Italy that make this thing a little bit better. And so I've done a couple things through their, through their parts and, and guidance. And uh, just, just to make it run, just a touch better, uh, a little bit more horsepower, and it's, it's pretty amazing. Ferrari Red, it's of the, course. Well, it's the old school Ferrari horn, you know, not like a new one, it's not like a normal car. This is the old air horn. Hit it. Let's hear it. Hit the horn. <laughs> you said you wanted it. I got it. You know what? If the engine note doesn't get you, the horn will. Yeah. So they made 1,311 all together, okay. 212 for the U.S. because the U.S. car is technically a separate car. Uh, and this is the 1990, which is the first year they brought them into the U.S., but this is a very late 90. Um, if it were made just a few weeks later, it would be a 91. And um, to me, these cars were hand-built by a team of 17 guys, and every car is a little bit different. And so there's no real year that makes them better than the others. You just have to go through and look at each one and say, is this car put together exactly how I want it to be? And this car is great. All the panels are very even. Uh, the body fits properly. Everything about it is, is really well done and well made. One of the obvious unique things about this car is that it's all carbon fiber and that there are no, it's a race car, right? There's no air conditioning, none of the stuff, that, it, none of the creature comforts. It, it, has, it has AC, but that's it. It has AC, okay. It has AC or right. a heater, but it doesn't have a radio. Uh, it doesn't even have a dome light <laughs> in it. Uh, it, doesn't all, even have, it doesn't even have door handles. All the reduced weight, it's got a little like... Yeah, uh, it's got a cable to pull. <laughs> uh, and yeah, it's, everything's lightweight and speedy. It doesn't have any assist, no, no power steering, no power brakes, no traction control, no anything. Uh, it's got very big brakes, but you can't just hit the brakes and stop. You've got to stand on the brakes to slow down. Are they carbon fiber or is it before carbon fiber? It is before carbon fiber. Um, and there are a couple of guys who actually put carbon fiber brakes, but it doesn't make any sense for a car like this. Nice big steel brakes work, work fantastic. And tell me about the engine. So this is a 2.9 liter twin turbocharged motor. How many and cylinders? Eight cylinders. Okay. And it's... It's very docile before you get on the boost. It's kind of like driving a, a 308 in a way because the, the motor is just about the same. 
How many miles you got on it? I have 26,400. 26, that's a hell of a lot for a F40. They fall apart if you don't drive them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I think one of the reasons why this car is so good <laughs> and so reliable uh, is because, you know, everybody who's had it has put some miles on it and really kept it going. Uh, it makes a big difference overall. You, you know, know there, I, I've driven a few that have 7,000, 6,000 miles on them. They don't drive nearly as nicely as this one does. You know, you know, Ryan, the word driver and F40 very seldom go together in the same sentence. Well, you know, people say, oh, but isn't it expensive to own? It's way more expensive to own if you don't drive it. You know, this thing was made before traction control, so you have these big 335 millimeter wide tires. The whole point of that is that's the traction control. What gives you pleasure? You know, I don't really get pleasure from owning it. Like, what do you do? You tell people, oh, I own a Ferrari? That's not really me. It is super douchey, yeah. and so you know I get pleasure from driving it, and it's and it's great to to, to drive it a couple days a week and put some miles on it and keep it going properly. There's a story about this car with Enzo, right? This is like the last. This car is the last car that he did, and and there are a couple stories floating around. But so they did this to celebrate the 40th anniversary, and as I said, they took the 288 GTO and they they evolved it as much as they could possibly evolve it. But one of the things about it was that uh, when he when he commissioned it, all he said was, "I want to do something like we did in the old days. That is the best of what we can do." And I went when people drive it, he said, "I want them to crap their pants when they hit the throttle." <laughs> hey, do you crap your pants when you hit the throttle? I'm used to it now, but uh, it sure makes you smile though. <laughs>